Did you hear something? Uh, what was that, Edmund? Well, I thought I... Masonites? Who the dickens are they? Well, it all goes back to 1852. <laughs> you I'd go back to where I came. If I was you? Don't you mean if I were you? Listen, if I'm the bum, how's come I have better grammar than you do? A house come? How's come? That's hardly better grammar. It appears you haven't risen above a society and grand with grammatical archaisms and shoddy discourse. Yes, but it could be argued that the speech that is accepted by a culture, while grammatically erroneous, is hardly uncouth in casual dialogue. You may speak true, but logic would dictate that my previous statement, if I was you, would fall in such a context. Interesting point. Wait. Oh, yeah. Listen, buddy. Leave her alone. Hey, you ain't heard the last of this. I'll tell you what. I don't think he'll be bothering you anymore. Thanks. I really appreciated it. You're welcome. I think. So, uh, how long have you been working here? Well, my father owns a place. 
I've been working here since you bought, bought it from the previous owner, who spontaneously combusted about two years ago. Oh. Uh, so, um, what does your mother do? She's a freelance janitor. In fact, she's right over there. So, where are you from? I, uh, don't know. You don't know where you're from? Oh, I'm, I mean Pennsylvania. Why are you in this town? I'm walking the earth. <laughs> what do you mean, walking the earth? You know, like Kane and Kung Fu. It's really just a politically correct phrase that means I'm unemployed and lazy. You really shouldn't be here. That guy was right. This town is dangerous for someone like you. You can't go interfering with other people. You, you just never know. Never know what? <laughs> Something here just isn't kosher. What, are you Jewish? <laughs> no, I just don't dig on swine, that's all. You see, for a while, things have been happening here. Bad things. Weird things. Big things, little things, the Visco thing, the Jay Leno thing. I get the point. And the police don't know about this? Police? Police were the first to become one of them. One of who? They're called the Masonites. The Masonites? I gotta go. Wait! Wait, I didn't get your name! Name's it, Horton. If I was you, I'd be minding my own business and be hightailing it out of here. Don't you dare correct my grammar. Look, what did I do? Who are the Masonites? Stop saying that name! Do you know what could happen to me now that they know that I know that you know? Uh, no. I don't either, but I bet it's pretty bad. Look, what, what's been happening to people? Well, you know how there's that little delay from when a light turns red to the other one turns green? Mm, yeah? The Masonites did that. That sucks. And then they started turning people into Democrats. It spread so far they even elected one as president. That's awful. Yeah, but that's not the worst part of it. You've been taking all those shoes that were left. Uh, left from what? No, I mean that they took the shoes that people were wearing on their left feet. Do you know what it's like to go through life as a man with one red shoe? Someone has got to put a stop to this. No, it's too dangerous. You get yourself killed, or worse, democrated. And you're putting me in danger. Look, I can't just stand by and let this continue. Yes, you can. It's easy. Just stand there and leave me alone. Wait! I still didn't get your name! It's Juliet! Thanks! I think he's probably sad because he's just not happy. A penny for your thought. Don't you mean thoughts? Well, I did want to rush him. Listen, buddy. When the day is long, 
and the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. You've got to hold on to what you've got. Because you're only halfway there, even though you feel like you're living on a prayer. Don't let the days go by. You're the real thing. In fact, you're even better than the real thing. Four score and seven years ago, well, I was only happy when it rained, but ever since Jeremy spoke in class that one day, I've been standing on top of the world. Did you ever consider the fact that perhaps he doesn't speak English? What is this assumption of yours that everyone always speaks the same language as you do? Please excuse the narrow-mindedness of my friend. It is often accentuated by his nonsensical superfluousness. May he wants to join our club. We can't just let anyone join the club. Why not? We let that weird guy from Spain in. Oh, you mean Mateo. That's different. We're required by law to include diverse members. Oh, uh, you mean like different nationalities? No. The law states that for any club whose leaders are not in a clear mental state, the club has to include members of various mental stages of instability. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do when I'm president is make a law that says that... What club? Oh, sure. He becomes interested as soon as we offer him money. But we didn't offer him money. Well, I was about to. All right, buddy, we'll show you the club. But this time our offer is lower than before. Yeah. This way, we have a car waiting. What offer? Get in the car, you jerk. What'd I do? Oh, tough guy, eh? Well, just for that, you're riding in the back, buddy. He's a bit odd. He's a bit odd? You're dead. You're dead. You hear me, dead guy? You're dead. Hey, you. Yeah, you at the tombstone. Guess you won't be eating any more Big Macs anymore, will you? Huh? So let me get this straight. In your club, you drive around to graveyards and you yell at dead people, right? No, that's not it at all. For one thing, it's not just dead people. And we're not really yelling either. We're helping to relieve the tensions of those spirits traveling between dimensions in order to reach the spiritual realm. We give them a little something to focus on and make the journey easier. Yeah, basically we just yell at dead people. Yeah, I mean you dead person. How would you like someone doing this to you when you were dead? I'm not going to die. I'm invincible. You're a loony. Once you've been in our club for a while, you'll understand. I don't want to be in your club, and I definitely didn't come here for this. This is asinine. Asinine? Asinine. I hate the word, because I hate hell, long checkout lines, sauerkraut, and thee. Listen, I'm sorry if I upset you. All I want to do is get back into your town and see if I can find what I'm looking for. Maybe the mason can help you. The mason? As in the Masonites? Actually, this club is a division of the Masonites. It all goes back to 1852 Take me to him now! Well, okay, Mr. Tough Guy. Yeah, Mr. Tough Guy. Man, you get a little late in paying somebody and they start making demands. Paying who why?
awake, young Juliet. Who's there? I'm delighted to make your acquaintance, Miss Juliet. Tell me, was the ride comfortable? You're him, aren't you? You're the leader of the Masonites. You're the one who's been sending your goons to wreck the town. You could say that. What do you want with me? Oh, my dear Juliet. Indeed, whatever shall I do with you? You have been seen and heard helping an outsider. One who could go and tell other outsiders about who we are. I don't like that. I was hoping that with your disappearance, he would leave and forget he came to this place. But it seems that your Samaritan friend just doesn't know when he's in over his head. I see he will have to be dealt with. Rather severely, I'm afraid. What are you planning to do? Well, after your friend is found and brought here, you both will be punished for the disturbance you've caused. After all, I can't have heroes trying to break the control I have over your puny little village. People won't stand for this terrorizing forever. <laughs> well, yes, they will. You see, they can't refuse it now because I've established it as a way of life. It's actually a true representation of society on a small scale. The people won't advocate change, even if not changing is harmful to them. Because to some, personal change is more painful than outside persecution. In a way, I provide a sense of security. Because they know that they don't have to be unsure as to whether or not something horrible will happen to them. They can be sure that something horrible will happen to them. And I make sure it does on a regular basis. Not all people exist to lift up others. I am here because my awful existence is a necessity to the stubborn society. I am the messiah of an inflexible people. William? Yes, sir? I must say, William, that's the best intimidation speech you've ever written. Thank you, sir. I try to do my best. Well, you've outdone yourself. In fact, I think it's time you've had a raise. Really, sir? No, not really. After all, if I did something nice for you, I'd hardly be a good villain now, would I? <laughs> of course not. Silly minion. stupid with me. I know what kind of people you are. I know how you terrorize this town. Mason, you and your people are truly scum. How dare you speak in such ways against the Mason? He's a good cult leader. I'm sorry. Don't consider a person that turns people into Democrats and kidnaps women to be good. Why would the Mason do such a thing? He's not a Democrat. None of us are. Politically speaking, the Masonites are an independent party specialized in promoting local governments into an anarchist and Nicholas commune. And we certainly haven't kidnapped anyone. Look, I saw some men that looked like they were from your cult take Juliet. So if it wasn't you, who was it? Subjects. The 
Because of us, the name of Mason has been ruined. And soon the Masonites themselves will be destroyed. However, our scouts tell us that the man with the guitar case has not left our town, even after the disappearance of his friend. Because of his interference, he must be brought here and punished along with the girl. Now go! So let me get this straight. You think someone's been trying to ruin the reputation of the Masonites? Well, yes, that's exactly what I just said. Oh, just making sure. So who is this other person who is really terrorizing the people? Well, our semi-intelligence people think it might be Mason's brother, Dimitri. It seems he's harbored bad feelings toward Mason ever since Mason's father gave the inheritance to Mason instead of his brother. What inheritance? Leadership of the Masonites. Dimitri was the firstborn, which usually met the inheritance. However, Dimitri was a bit of a rogue, and his father decided he wasn't fit to assume command. I guess it all goes back to 1852. Wait a minute. How could the Masonites exist before Mason did? Because the club carries the family's last name, which is Mason. So your last name is Mason? Yep. So, what's your first name? Mason. Apparently, after losing the cult to Mason, Dimitri decided to form a cult of his own. Now it seems he's using that cult to discredit Mason. How do you know all of this? Oh, we found his newsletter. See? Look, all I want is to find Juliet. Tell me how I can reach Dimitri. Well, using soil samples that were taken from the pamphlet, we were able to determine that it might have originated in one of five places within this county. From this data, we theorized possible locations where a cult would perhaps thrive undetected and postulated that... Why don't you just go to the address in the back of the pamphlet? See? Because that's just what they would expect us to do. I must consult with the Mason. Hey, I'm hungry. Let's get some pizza. Sure, in a sec. All right. The Mason has agreed to let some of our men accompany you on your quest. On my quest? Carl, Dan, Joe, you shall go with him. I'll go warm up the car. You left it running. Oh, crap! Hey, are we going to get packed lunches? Shut up. We just ate. Well, if we're not back by 6.15, we're not going to get eaten in the cold cafeteria. Can we go? You know, buddy, you're as pushy now as the day I met you. You met me today. Don't bring that into this argument. Yeah. Let's go, Dan. Why do you have that thing over your face? Hungry. Take it off. Fine. Yes. I can believe it. Well, as long as you have the power to believe that not all is lost. Shut up. Hey, where is he going? I don't know. Do that to Earthwalkers? I don't know. Uh, I think we may have a problem. So, let me get this straight. You let our guest get hit over the head and get dragged into a strange car, and you didn't do anything. Well, 
I couldn't have very well let him get dragged into our car, because after all, it was out of gas. Well, come on. Haven't you guys been listening? I said before it was out of gas. Well, I guess that's it. He was a nice guy, but he's a goner now, so meeting adjourned. Mm. So, you know, uh, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. I'll touch sheep's butter. Man, all we have to remember and buy is his guitar. He loved that thing. No, we have more important things to remember and buy. We have our memories of him. I guess for me, I'll always remember the way he smiled when we used to take car rides through the country. I'll miss the discussions we used to have. Even though he would win them all, I still enjoyed them immensely. You know, it's going to be hard to break this to my parents. He was like another son to them. Did he ever meet your parents? Well, no, but I'm sure he would have been like another son to them. You know, in the midst of all this uh, grief, I'm reminded of a saying I heard a long time ago. You see, love is blindness and cold steel. And everybody hurts sometimes. But there's always shiny, happy people waiting on the other side. It's like, it's hey. like a bridge over trouble. Shouldn't we, like, do something? The Mason speaks. Is that supposed to happen? I don't know. What do you mean, Mason? Well, can't we help him? What did you have in mind? Welcome, my young friend. You no longer need those. Finally, we meet again. I feel like I've hated you my entire life, but we've never met before. Oh, really? Remember this? Listen, you bum. We don't need you interfering in the affairs of a small town. You're the man from the restaurant. Yes, and as I recall, you tried to correct my grammar. A fatal mistake, my friend. Oh, here's something else you may remember. Juliet, you're alive. Hey, why are you here? Because I've been looking for you. Oh, that's nice. Oh, this is such a happy moment. I actually feel bad about killing both of you. You know, you don't really have to. <laughs> I was just kidding, silly victim. Actually, I'm very happy to kill both of you. But why? Why am I happy or why must I kill you? Oh. Why must I kill you both? No, both questions. Which? I've forgotten now. Why are you... never mind. Listen, Dimitri. How many poor people do you have to kill to keep your reign of terror? Seventeen. How much longer will you be able to keep your grip on the town? Three years. How many times can you... You're just throwing out numbers, aren't you? Yes. I give up. As you should. Many have tried to challenge me and have failed. They gave a feeble attempt at resistance and then followed like sheep. Some were stupid enough to believe right away that I was their answer to their incredibly low self-worth. I made them into mindless followers, obedient to any ridiculous command I would give them. I turned these imbecilic townspeople against their own friends and families. All have succumbed, and you were no different. It is my will that you should not interfere with my plans, and so you shall not, as you will soon cease to exist. Another great intimidation speech, William. Well, let's say we get on with the death stuff, okay? William, you may shoot them now. William, what on earth are you doing? My father was a happy Republican until you destroyed his political preference. You made me believe I was writing intimidating speeches for an adventure game. Well, life is kind of like an adventure game, isn't it? You've all been deceived. This man has been corrupting your lives and making you corrupt the lives of those whom you are corrupting. Here's one last intimidation speech for you. You are about to be given something you don't want and have something taken that you don't deserve anyway. With the twitch of my finger, your existence will no longer be allowed. Isn't it fitting that you used my voice for so long to destroy the lives of so many people? And now it is that same voice telling you of your imminent destruction. Yes, 
irony can be pretty ironic sometimes. Well, no matter. This town is about to have the best thing in the world happen to it! Say hi to Jerry Garcia for me. Wait, wait, wait! You don't have to kill him! He doesn't deserve to live. Yes, but violence never solves anything. See? That didn't solve anything, did it? My subjects, attack these insolent people. I see we already have the situation under control. Nice timing. Mason? Hey, how you doing? Look, I didn't intend to. I, I didn't mean anything. I was... Look, you can take over if you want to. Don't do anything without thinking. I'm sorry! Please don't kill me! You were always my favorite brother! Please tell me you won't kill me! Okay. Thank you. Thank you. For a wise and gracious room. Thank you. Thank you. This is pathetic. Get him out of here. You're dead. Don't you ever say anything intelligent? Anything intelligent? I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you. I wonder what that meant. Oh, I think I know. So you want to get some coffee? Okay. So, it's finally over? Yes, Dimitri's reign of terror is no more, and peace once again settles over the town. You know, it's going to be hard for people to trust in the name Mason again, but I think that in time, their trust will return. And isn't trust like a ballpark, Frank? It plumps when you cook it. Hey, big chair. You know, I was wondering, what is it that the Masonites really do? That's a good question. Well, are you going to tell me? No, I'm going to show you. Lights! We're a techno dance club. Record!
and isn't trust like a ball park, Frank? It pumps when you cook it. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Please excuse the narrow-mindedness of my friend. It is often accentuated by his nonsensical superfluousness. <laughs> my father was a happy Republican until you destroyed his political preference. He made me believe I was writing something. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. That's gonna be a great. Uh, <laughs> 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 you are gonna. <laughs> Another great intimidation speech, William. Well, okay, let's see. If we get on with the other stuff. Hey, how you doing? Hey, work. Next time. Next time it's uh, you. You. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're like my...